In today's video, how to track macros. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rebella from ProPhysique.com and today is a perfect time to talk about tracking macros. First, we're gonna talk about what macros are, why you should track them, and then I'm gonna give you some tangible advice and if you wait around to the end of the video, I'm gonna explain exactly how many calories and carbohydrates and protein and fat and all the fun stuff you should be taking in for your goal. So first things first, what are macronutrients? Well, we refer to macronutrients as macros. There are four major ones, okay? Protein, carbs, fats, and alcohol. Now, I know a lot of people don't focus much on alcohol, but we can also talk about how we can incorporate alcohol into your daily goals if you wanna have a couple drinks and still work towards your fat loss goals, yes. Alcohol has calories, and so we can focus on that. So let's talk about what calories make up our macronutrients. So the most calorie-dense macronutrient, do you know what it is? Say it in your head. It's fat. Fat has nine calories per gram. This is more than double protein and carbohydrates, which are around four calories per gram. If you're tracking alcohol, that has seven calories per gram. What we're looking at here is a system where we just start to have some accountability. You guys know I'm big on people reaching their fitness goals through accountability because once you start to understand the content of food and you get away from the binary thinking of, oh, that's a good food and that's a bad food, well, you can actually start to enjoy the foods that you want and fit them in to a healthy approach to reaching your goals. Now, why are some foods labeled as healthy? Well, in my experience, doing this more than a decade, and I've reached a body composition like you'll see here on the screen, I'm a competitive natural bodybuilder, still a lifetime natural bodybuilder, you guys keep asking me. But the point is, I've learned how to manipulate macronutrients, and what I've noticed through those macronutrients is why certain foods are considered good for you or healthy. They're typically very high in one macronutrient group, right? So something like almonds, which is mostly fat. Something like chicken, which is mostly protein. Something like rice, which is almost only carbohydrates, right? These foods can be considered healthy because they provide a lot of volume in one macronutrient group. Now, something that might be considered unhealthy, pizza, well, guess what that's high in? All of it. It's got a lot of protein, it's got a lot of carbs, it's got a lot of fats, it's calorie dense, and it's easy to overconsume those calories. So this is kind of where I find that people will use the term healthy or clean eating meaning that are foods that are high in a single macronutrient or if they are have a lot of micronutrients they'll also have a lot of fiber they just help you stay full longer so let's talk about how to track macronutrients and the best way to do that now the first thing i did more than a decade ago when i wanted to learn how to track macros was you got to put in a little work you got to download an app okay now when i started there were no apps for this so this really does make the process a little bit easier because they have these huge food libraries. You don't have to look up the nutritional value for all the foods that you want to track. Now, the app that I prefer, it's a free download. It's called Fat Secret. It's basically a food diary. And one of the first things I'll do with someone who's interested in working with me but has not been familiar with tracking macronutrients is have them do a diet recall. Now, if you are interested or looking for a coach, you can go to prophysique.com and you can fill out a simple form and we can set up a free consultation to discuss your goals and how we can help you reach them. But for the purposes of this video, I just wanna show you what a diet recall would look like. You would open up your app, you would simply start putting everything in your app that you eat or drink for 24 hours. That's gonna give you uh, your protein, your carbs, your fats, your calories for the day, okay? Macronutrients make up your calories. So once you start to understand, it's really gonna help paint a picture because a lot of people, and I just did a video on this, will say that they're eating 12 to 1500 calories, but they're not really paying attention to the amount of times that they're snacking, the actual foods that they're eating, or they assume that their foods have less calories than they actually do because they are labeled as healthy or clean. So the real focus for this first step in tracking macros is just to get familiar with food. Now, the new apps even have a scanner. So you can take something that you've purchased from a store that has a barcode, scan it, and enter it into your daily foods. Now, something you have to remember, the FDA does allow for a 20% variance in the amount of calories that are in foods. That's right. So if somebody says, something says that it has 100 calories, it can actually have 20% less, 80 or 20% more, 120, and still be within the range. So understanding that the food values that we use have been found through a calorimeter. A calorimeter is a device where they put food in and they find out the chemical makeup. Does that mean that every single thing that we eat is exactly the same? No, but what we're doing is we're eliminating variables. We're getting as close as possible 
and we're also figuring out what works for us. So tracking macros is a great way to be accountable, but I don't want people to get obsessive with it. Understanding that our bodies are dynamic, foods are dynamic, and that it's not about being perfect. It's about being accountable and starting to understand. This is the approach that I use with my competitors. Now I will say that the foods that we eat more consistently will get more consistent with our diet. Okay. When there's huge variations in what we're eating, we're likely to run into problems. So the next step with tracking macronutrients is just how do we do that? Okay. So if you look at a food label, I'll put a food label on the screen here for you. The nutrition food labels in the United States are required to, to contain calories, protein, carbs, fats, and fibers, and as well as some other things. And I know a lot of people will then look at that and go, well, this has net carbs. So I'm only eating four carbs. False. Net carbohydrates are the carbohydrates that impact your blood sugar. They are digested slightly differently, different in the gut, so they have less impact on your blood sugar, but you still extract those calories. So when I'm talking to my clients, I'm talking to you guys, I would say to track all your carbohydrates, not just the net carbs. Another big one is weight. This is probably the most common question I get when it comes to tracking macronutrients. Do I track my food raw or cooked? Well, it's a great question because the nutrition value actually changes. So if you're looking a food up, it's actually going to be tracked based on how you have it in the label. So if you go to the store and buy some chicken, it's going to give you a nutrition label for that chicken. If the chicken is raw, that is the nutritional value for that chicken raw. If you buy it cooked, that is the nutritional value for that chicken cooked. This can vary greatly because when you prepare food, it can either gain weight or lose weight. So just make sure that you're tracking it how you're eating it. For meats, I find that I prefer it cooked because it gets very difficult to cook and weigh and deal with raw food before you've consumed it, okay? It just makes it a little more consistent if you track it weighed. Now the big question when it comes to tracking macronutrients and calories is how many calories should I be taking in? Why should I be tracking this? Well, this is gonna help you reach your physique goals and if you don't really know where to start, the first thing to do is do a diet recall. That'll give you a good idea, but if you really wanna start even before that, Pro Physique has a really cool calculator. I'll put it on the screen here. This thing is robust. You're gonna put in a bunch of information about your height, your age, your weight, your activity levels, and it's gonna break down things like your macros, it's gonna break down things like meals, what you prefer to do, and it's no cost. So it's a great way to get started on your goals, kind of understanding, but understand that this is just a calculator based on research, so it's not specific to you. If you're looking for specific to you, I really suggest doing the diet recall, tracking your calories for a day, three days, maybe even a week, and understanding where your caloric averages are. Then you can start to say, okay, here's where my average calories are, here's where my average activity level is, now you're starting to get a big picture of where your health and fitness are. If you're not able to lose weight, you might start to realize that a couple times a week, you're over consuming calories. And a couple times a week, you're underactive. This is all it comes down to, guys. We just gotta find ways to reach our goals. And if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below or go to my Instagram direct message at Paul Ravella and send me your questions directly. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.